against you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Ernie. Anyone. First Chronicles 18. Good morning, brothers and sisters. As we continue in our daily house of prayer, reading the word of God, binding and loosening for the whole world, not only for our own families. And this is a really a tribute to what God can do for any one of us today. That's the way I look at this chapter as I listened to it uh, two times through this morning and reflected on my thoughts with it. But this is God's word. And this is the word of God and it's God's word is truth. And this is something I got excited last night because I went to bed listening to God's word. You know, I get up in the morning, I'm, I begin with God's word, and a lot of times at night, I go to bed listening to God's word. But chapter 18, 1 Chronicles, I hope you enjoy. I hope I uh, pronounce some of these words okay. Anyone out there, anyone can do this, anybody can read the word of God. Just don't beat people up if they don't pronounce things the way you do. That's not grace. That's not love. That's just picking on people. And those kind of people need to look in the mirror. You know, everybody's got their own battles. So now after all this came to pass, that David, that's King David, smote the Philistines and subdued them. And he took Gath and the towns out of the hands of the Philistines. In other words, he defeated them. And what's amazing about this chapter, he's defeating everybody in this chapter as I continue. Verse 2, and he, he smote Moab, and the Moabites became what? David's servants and brought gifts. So he he didn't kill everybody now. He's, he's letting them, them serve him. And notice what they're doing. They're bringing him gifts. That's what praise and thanksgiving and walking in the word of God and giving an offering to help those that are in need. You know, today's world, a lot of people are in need. And I love America in a lot of ways because they set up in the political system ways to help the poor. Otherwise, that whole burden would be on the body of Christ. And, you know, when I read into a lot of this stuff and I look at what even the enemies of David ended up doing here in the beginning, they were bringing the king gifts. And, and, and it's really amazing because in verse 3, he goes on after receiving gifts. It says, and David smote Hadarizia, Hadarizia, king of Zobah, unto Hamath as he went to establish his dominion by the river Euphrates. So he was setting an example. And David, King David, was showing the surrounding people, his enemies, that God had, he had favor with God. And David took from him, uh, had a razor, took from him a thousand chariots and 7,000 horsemen and 20,000 footmen. David also towed all the chariots, horses. That's that thing he did to horses with their hamstrings, but reserved some of them a hundred chariots so that they couldn't be used in. A lot of wisdom here when I'm reading out when David was conquering, he was also setting it up not to be conquered. You know, kind of troubled me when, you know, my wife first told me about the signs telling us to beware of terrorism in the United States. That's the first time in my life I've ever saw a sign on the Garden State Parkway or Route 287 in New Jersey. And there's got to be something they know that they're not telling the people. And, and, you know, it's not we the people anymore, people. That's why we got to pray for God's mercy in this country. And when the Syrians of Damascus came to help, 
Adorasur, king of Soba. David, what did he do here? He slew of the Syrians two and 20,000 men. That's a lot of dead people. Then David put garrisons in Syria, Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants. Far cry of what we're seeing in the Middle East right now. But yet we got all these Middle Eastern countries in that area being named in scripture this morning. Shows you what kind of king David was and what favor he had with the creator, with God. That's why there's a, there's a lot of, I, I call it insanity, religious insanity that's going on in that part of the world right now. Because I think nobody's got the real take on what's going on, not even us. But God's got the whole take, people. And I, I, I'm a firm believer in taking everything to God every day in prayer right now. You know, one point yesterday, my prayers got answered at, at the, 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 the place. I, I was very glad when Antoine walked in because he was the missing link that I needed there. And I didn't know they were coming. I never know who comes to the church. And he came with his wife and the child. And the child left with a smile on her face because God God does take care of the sheep when, when you finally say hey I can't take this no more I, I tell it to God all the time you got to help me our our help comes from the Lord once you're a believer we have to learn to give him all the glory that's what David was doing back then it says here David put garrisons in Syria, Damascus, and the Syrians became David's servants. And what did they do? They brought gifts. In other words, they showed tribute to the king. You know? And David's servants brought gifts, and the Lord preserved David. And it says, whithsoever he went. It means wherever David went, God had him. Well, we got that same blessing right now, today, real time, because God's got us in his hand. You just got to believe that. You just got to keep your eyes turned to the good Lord above and stay in his will. How do you do that? You read the word of God and you, you put the word of God into action. As I said in the warfare prayer this morning, we do the word of God. That's the sign of someone that's faithful to God when we hear the word of God and we start doing the word of God. Doubt and unbelief stop us from walking with God, people. I don't care what anyone wants to say. I am a nobody in the kingdom, but I am somebody in God's eyes because I pray every day. I talk to God. And if I'm making mistakes, I take the criticism and make the adjustments. Sometimes we're not always one. Sometimes we've got to yield to the word of God and say, okay, I made a mistake. I can do better. But David here, after uh, over where he was, wherever he went, David took the shields of all gold that were on the servants, again, of Adoleser, and brought them to Jerusalem. Likewise, from Tiboth and from Chun, cities of Hadareser brought David very much brass. We all know the brass was used in the uh, tabernacle. And wherewith Solomon made the brazen sea and the pillars and the vessels of brass. Now, verse 9, when Tuakim of Hamath heard David had smitten all the host of the Hadareser king of Zobah, he sent Hadaram, his son, to King David. So there, however the communication was back in the Old Testament, word of mouth was powerful. We also know that from our Lord Jesus Christ. He took a dozen men, and because of the love they had for God, 
he used just a handful of men. Think about it. Two handfuls with a finger, okay? Six and six. Well, 12 men went out, and because they believed the, 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 the word that Christ spoke to them all the time, and what? They witnessed the miracles. The religious couldn't deal with it. And that's because the, all they were were religious. They weren't serving the true God. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, they were serving the devil. It's all in the book here. It's all in scripture. You just got to learn to read the Bible and keep reading the Bible, just like all the people I know reading War on the Saints. People that are really seeking God, they get back in that book and they keep reading it. I see those testimonies coming from 10 years ago still starting to sprout today that's like you know come on now every one of us believe in god does everyone here or everyone that's not here open their bibles every day only god knows my wife always teaches me that we don't go home with anybody we don't know what people do in all their free time but as for me and my house we're going to serve the lord and that's that's up to the the head of the house, the man of the house has to put that into action. And even if they're rejecting it, still be the man of the house. What I always learn is sit down and open a Bible and read it in front of people. You don't even have to talk to them. You know, get them hungry and thirsty for something they might not know. So now to, to a king of Hamath heard David had smitten all, all the hosts of Hadarezer, king of Zobah. So he sent Hadaron, his son, to King David to inquire of his welfare and to congratulate him because he had fought against Hadarezer and smitten him. For Hadarezer had war with uh, Toyu, or I don't know how to pronounce that properly, to you. And with him, all manner of vessels of gold, silver, and brass. So as we see from the other books, they, whoever won the war took all the spoils. Verse 11, then also King David dedicated it unto the Lord. So everything that was given to him, what did he do? Passed it forward. That's what, that's what giving is all about being a cheerful giver. The blessings of God are yea and amen. I, I was talking to a brother the other day. You can't, when you're really in God's walk, you can't outdo anything God has for any of us. You just walk faithfully and obediently. God, sometimes in his time, he opens doors. You don't even understand when the blessing is coming and how it's coming. But man, our God delivers, man. That's all I'm going to tell you. You're hearing it from a guy that got grace and mercy from Jesus Christ, and I didn't deserve none of it, okay? But he knew that I was a crazy guy in life, that I would be a, a, a good person to talk about the goodness of God as I get older to everybody. Because the fear of the Lord is is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, reverence. When you really realize who God is, you used to make your plans to him. You make them a part of your daily decisions. You pray about all things. So let's look at this. 11. Them also King David dedicated to the Lord with the silver and the gold that he brought from all those nations. He didn't covet it. You look at this, from Edom, from Moed, and from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines, and from uh, Amalek, which were the Amalekites. Moreover, Abishai, the son of Zoriah, slew the Edomites in the valley of Salt, 18,000. And he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became David's servants. Almost like what some of these big nations are trying to do right now, conquer everyone around them so that they could become the servants of those dictators and rulers. Quite, quite a show here. 
But when you really understand something about God and you're in the kingdom of God and you're doing kingdom work and you're doing what God wills us to do, when you're walking with God, I'm serious here. No weapon formed against you will prosper. That's those are promises that God speaks to all of us with. And sometimes we don't want to believe what God speaks. Sometimes we read the Bible, oh, he didn't mean that, or someone gets in your ear. And that's just the devil trying to stop you from getting the grace that's already been bought from each and every one of us in the tree. I, I get serious when I read this stuff because it draws me closer to God. Sometimes it doesn't draw me close to people because people are rebellious. They're stubborn. You know, that spirit of rebellion is big, man. Antichrist does not want to confirm to God's word. Their job is to take God's word out of our hearts. So he put garrisons in Edom, and all the Edomites became his servants. Thus the Lord, what did the Lord do here, people? He preserved David whatsoever again. Wherever he went, David was preserved by God. And, and you think about some of the stories we've already read in the Old Testament, how God's chosen, they walked with God, even in the Old Testament, and God showed favor upon them. And we're seeing that about David, a sinner. And here David's, David's walking, and God's given him victory after victory. Why? Because he had a prayer life. He had a worship life. He really did believe in God. He showed it in the way he walked. So here, David reigned, verse 14, over all of Israel, executed judgment and justice. It's a far cry of what our leaders are doing real time today all over the world. Not just pointing in America. It's everywhere, people. Our God is the God of everyone, not just for an American citizen or uh, uh, anyone anywhere in the world that believes in Jesus Christ in their heart, confesses them. That's why I get upset about all these multimillionaire pastors here in the United States, and they brag. They brag about where they're sending money, what they're doing with money, and they shouldn't say a word. The left hand and the right hand ain't supposed to know what they're doing. They're not even following scripture. That shows you how bold these antichrist people are. Religion is what it is. God's a, a real God, and he's going to separate the sheep and the goats. That, that's already starting. People are waking up. Technology is going to blow up the world with God's truth. It has to happen because he's a merciful God. And his will is that people would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. If we get on that boat or that plane or that train for the gospel, every one of us would be leading people to the Lord every week. We would be really I mean, your spirit will rise to heights untold, people. So going back, he reigned, he executed judgment, justice among the people. Joab, the son of Zariah, was over the host. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilad, he was the recorder. And Zadok, the son of Ashitab, and Amilalak, the son of Abinathar, were the priests. And Shavashah was the scribe, and Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, was over the Cherethites and the Pelalites, and the sons of David were chief about the king. In other words, they surrounded David. Going into the Thomas Nelson commentary, I'm going to share, First Chronicles 18, this is what the commentary teaches us this morning. David defeated the four great enemies because the Lord was with him. But David saw that as much as more that there that than wars, they were opportunities.
these to claim more territory for the Lord. Remember, he was a man after God's own heart. He was only doing this for the extension of God's kingdom. Well, today we should be out there representing Jesus Christ as, a, as a, a ambassadors, bringing people to Christ. And in the process of doing that, these signs follow them that believe. It didn't just stop at the, the early church people because I'm witnessing we're doing the work that the apostles, the early disciples, the early books of the church fathers, today, brothers and sisters are getting saved. There's brothers and sisters, not even in our camps. God's moving people. People are getting saved and they're getting delivered. And demons are coming out of people. And Jesus said, leave them alone. Nobody can do a miracle in my name unless I'm with them. Now, there's also counterfeits. We all know that. But there's a lot of good going on around the world right now because there's there's people that are do, really doing it for God. That teaching I listened to yesterday, you know, I, I don't know. I must God, I showed my wife. I got at least 40 of his teachings in my smartphone, Barnett. And, and I got to tell you, good teacher. He was in the mission field for a long time. I, I bet he's got some real good stories. I haven't known him enough through his material to have a deeper insight on the brother. But what he, what I put up there about Satan and mine, and I didn't put it up on the thing because I'm putting it into the video list. It gives you an understanding of the enemy that we're fighting right now, real time. Here, look at David Reason, you know. It says here in the commentary, he looked beyond the battle to the temple, a place where they could worship God. He was doing everything he was doing. He was doing for the Lord. So as he reasoned, he said, if I cannot build the Lord's temple, at least I can help my son do it. One generation's victories can help build the next generation's temples. You know, I laugh with this because for the last few years with Brother Ernie, we talk about leaving something for the next generation, praying for other people, God would raise up the youth. We've been praying that solidly for years and we're watching it begin to happen because it has to, you know, to get to a, a multitude that no man could count, we ain't there yet. And, and one generation's victories can help build the next generation. David dedicated to the Lord, the spoils he won, and the gifts and tribute he received. Go back and look at First Chronicles chapter 28. You'll see it all there, what was going on. Each enemy, listen to this, each enemy can give you something to build God's work on earth. Temptation is the opportunity to get the treasure without winning the battle. Faith overcomes the enemy, and claims the spoils of the Lord. Now, I know uh, in the very beginning, and I, I mentioned Benaniah's name, in the Old Testament record, the name Benaniah belongs to at least a dozen men. But the most fascinating of all is the man mentioned in First Chronicles 18, verse 17. He was born a priest. For First Chronicle 27, 5, but became a soldier. Okay. A couple of weeks ago, I preached that about we're all soldiers. Once you're born again, you become a soldier. But we're also a royal priesthood, brothers and sisters. He began his military career as one of David's mighty men back in 2 Samuel 23. You can read it in 20 to 23. Those are the verses. And was put over David's person. He was put over David's personal bodyguard. Eventually, Benaniah became head of Solomon's army. First Kings chapter 2, verse 35. Once again, I tell everybody, this is part 
of Jesus saying, search the scriptures and you know who I am. You got to believe the Father and the Son are one to even understand the Bible. You got to got to get your faith aligned with the word of God. Why? Because why I say that a lot of people debate all this stuff. And Jesus said, I'm the truth, the life and the way the father and I are one. So regardless, they're the same God. That's why you can't understand the Holy Ghost, you know, and that's their spirit. And he's part of the Godhead. I keep it simple. My life has gotten real simple. I don't have an interest in worldly things anymore. Yeah, it's okay to go somewhere and have a meal with someone here and there. But I, I'm not striving for the rudiments of the world. I gave that up many years ago. So I look at the Word of God every day, and that's what I'm getting into, reading my Bible, getting to know my Savior. Get, or should I say getting to know God, God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? That even offends people that call themselves Christians. They want to argue over that. And God says, avoid foolish arguments. Nobody can take your salvation away. So why are you going to argue with another Christian? It, uh, that doesn't make sense. God says, avoid it. What avoid means is don't even go there. You know what I'm learning? My wife is helping me along my journey. She's saying, you get too much worried about this one and that one and they're not they're not seeking their own help with god and unless you really get straight up with god you don't get help people god's the deliverer he's the lover of our soul and it's imperative that you have an ongoing relationship with the one you say that saved you because that's when the light bulb goes on and that's where the grace comes in and, and God's gifts begin to flourish. And, and God gives us eyes to see the goodness of God, that God's got us all the time. Let me go back to finishing this commentary. See, I, I'm a preacher, so I like to preach about God's word. He could have enjoyed a relatively safe and easy life as a priest, but he chose a dangerous life of a soldier to serve his king. Wow. You know, I read this. And yeah, you're going to suffer affliction and persecution, and some people are going to lose their lives if you're really going to serve the king of kings. We've been forewarned. It's in the word of God. We know he killed the lion in the midst of a pit. On a snowy day, 2 Samuel 23 20. Frank, uh, another writer, wrote, He met the worst of enemies in the worst of places under the worst of conditions, and he won. And it closes in this commentary about the believing man, which that could be you and I today in our walk with Jesus Christ, and saying, What a man. Or what a sister. You know, when I heard about the sister, that there was no men to go into the jungle, and the, the woman went, and she led a 100 men to the Lord. What a sister. Women can be used in evangelism. I see it all the time. I've been seeing it from the beginning of being a baby Christian. You know, the theme in 18, 19, and 20 is David's wars, you know. From God's viewpoint, Chronicles is God's viewpoint. It emphasizes stuff. Sometimes we don't get the full understanding as we're reading the different books. How can wars be fitted into the interpretation? Because that is a question in the mind. I am sure of many folk. So in the New Testament, James is a very practical manner. He was asked the question, from where do wars come? He not only asked the question, but he gave the answer. From whence come wars and fightings among you? And that's what happens today in Christianity, people. I mean, it's all there. Everything's in Scripture that we need to be overcomers, and we need to understand that God has given us a roadmap in his Bible. It's God coming in the flesh, the Word. He became Jesus Christ. 
And he says, I'm going to teach you a little something if you read the book. From whence wars and fightings among you come from hence because of your lust. That war is in your members. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye have not, because you ask not. James chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. In other words, the background of war is the sinful heart of a man. It is very easy to protest wars, but we will never get rid of wars by protesting. For no protest may bring a single war to an end, but another one is sure to start because the basic problem is the sinful heart of man. And that's a mouthful when you get into reading about chapters, about commentaries. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ came into our world and said, when a strong man arm keep it his palace, his goods are in peace. But when the stronger then he shall come upon him and overcome him. He take it from him all the armor wherein he trusted and divided the spoils. That's in Luke 11, 21 and 22. Why did he say that? Because there are enemies abroad. We do not live in an ideal situation. And the millennium has not come yet. A lot of people forget about the millennium teaching in the Bible. I was talking to people about that at the church yesterday. The Prince of Peace is the only one who will bring peace to the earth. So forget about there being peace until Jesus comes. That's why he's the Prince of Peace. Okay. Until he comes, we will do well to keep our powder dry. And immediately after the man sinned, God said to Satan, and I will put enmity. That's going back to Genesis, people, 3.15. You know, between thy seed and her seed. And we can't remove that. That was spoken by God himself to Satan. Okay? There are going to be wars until sin is removed from the earth. Until all wickedness is removed. Wars are the symptoms. The disease is sin. I mean, how practical is this? I mean, I'm I'm giving you this right out of commentary. And, you know, when you read the Bible, if you don't have good commentaries, you never get a real-time thought pattern on this stuff. The disease, once again, is sin. It is sin that is the problem. David is becoming a man whom God had blessed. And as a result there, the enemies were round about him. As long as he was a little petty king, a tribal king, they paid very little attention to him. God lets us know that he took note of the fact that when David's kingdom was in the world where there was war, since you and I live in that kind of world also, we do well to keep locks on our doors. You know, I... I I listen to all the gibberish around what happened when this guy escaped from jail and he's, he murdered a woman and someone else had to take her children. And this guy is an immigrant from where? He was originally from Brazil. And he's not an old man. He's a young man. And he, it's almost like, how did he get into the United States to be getting away? You know, I, I look at this because I've been in the military. What's going on in our world today? Now let's look at David's wars. That's where the commentary brings us right now. Real simple. The nations mentioned here were the perpetual enemies of Israel and always attacked when the nation was weak. Why did David, remember I said he took the hamstrings on the horses? Why did David get rid of the horses? Because God told him that the people, their king, was not to multiply horses or wives. All he was doing was obeying God. And Solomon really went into the horse business, but David did not. These were the spoils of war. I think by the time David died, Israel had cornered the gold market. 
the gold was there in Jerusalem. You see, the materials out of which Solomon constructed the temple were accumulated all by David. Then when we see that King Hadman had gifts of appreciation to David for his victories because it was a mutual uh, foul. So the other king says, man, I'm going to give tribute over here to David for destroying my other enemy. David is given the victory over all these old enemies of Israel, which he fought until they became weak. There were enemies to be driven out. The child of God, and this is really good because it goes from the Old Testament way into the New Testament teaching. And that's why I, I love commentaries because I glean from them in our spiritual walk, brothers and sisters. David is given the victory over all these old enemies of Israel, which had fought against them when they were weak. You see, in order to become a king over the land, there were enemies that had to be driven out. So here we are. The child of God in our day has enemies also. In Ephesians 6.11, we are told to put on the whole armor of God. Our enemy doesn't happen to be flesh and blood. Our enemy is a spiritual enemy. That is the point Paul was making in Ephesians 2, 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers of darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is the situation in which you and I are all in, brothers and sisters. This idea that a Christian can sit down and twiddle his thumbs, that he can compromise with everything that comes along is entirely wrong. As Christians, we need to stand for what is right. I once heard a country preacher down in Georgia say, a lot of people, instead of standing on the promises, are sitting on promises. In other words, you're not applying them in your life. Unfortunately, that is true. We have spiritual enemies that must be overcome. And that's how chapter 18 concludes, because 19, you're going to see, now in 19, the incidents reveal God has a sense of humor. He suggests that David was a hot-headed fellow, but he did try to li live in peace. And I'll, I'll save that for Adam because he gets to talk about it. And if he doesn't bring up some of that point, I'll be here to help. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope someone down the line listens to this and we'll take our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as being a serious moment in their life and call upon him to save them. And that's what I got for everybody. God bless.